Hello. If you've ever used a map and a compass together, you'll know that there's a difference between the direction your map tells you to go and the direction your compass will give you. This difference is called declination and it changes over time and also depending on where in the world you are. Oh, by the way, in this video, I'm going to use the word declination as the difference between your map and your compass. I know it's not <laughs> before anybody starts writing comments. Declination is actually the difference between your compass direction and true north. But I always try to keep things really simple, you know, where possible. And let's face it, most people have got a map and a compass and they just use them together. So there you have it. <laughs> as soon as you start talking about declination, it can, if you allow it to, start getting really complicated. So today I want to keep things as simple as we possibly can. Let's just get this out the way first. When we're talking about maps, there are three main norths which, you know, which are used. The first one is true north, or sometimes called geodetic north. And this is the direction of the geographic north pole. It's the place at the top of the world where the world spins on its axis. There's also grid north, uh, which is the direction northwards along the vertical lines on your map. Um, this is different from true north as the, the straight vertical lines on your map are printed onto a flat piece of paper and those same lines on the ground actually represent lines which curve around a sphere, <laughs> so they're different. Um, I may do a video one day about the uh, Mercator projection, um, but today <laughs> I haven't got time to go into that. The last one is magnetic north, and this is the direction of the local magnetic fields in your area. And, you know, they generally point towards the magnetic north pole. So we need to make adjustments to be able to cope with declination. Now, obviously, you can't change a printed map. You know, it is what it is. It's a printed piece of paper. So it's necessary to make adjustments to your compass. To help people remember how to adjust their compass, there's always been various sayings or mnemonics, which, if you use them, will make sure that your compass is pointing in the right direction when you set off walking, or if you are plotting the location of a ground feature on a map. As an example, the military may use the LARS rule, uh, which is just L-A-R-S. Oh, for non-military people, by the way, the LARS rule is just left add, right subtract. To use it, what you do is you put your finger either on the north line on the index diagram, or if there isn't one, on a vertical grid line on your map. You then move your finger towards the magnetic north line, and let's say you've moved your finger left, then you would add the declination, so that's LA, and if you move it towards the right, then you subtract, which is the RS in Lars. I suppose the best known mnemonic to do with declination is grid to mag add, mag to grid get rid. And this just means that if you take a bearing from a map and you use it on a compass, so there'd be a grid bearing to a magnetic bearing, you add the declination. Or from a compass to a map, which is magnetic to grid, you, sub you subtract the bearing, so you get rid. The problem with this is that it doesn't work anywhere east of, with an east de declination, which is about half the world. <laughs> um, and all of the UK after about 2026, it just won't work. There are a lot of other simple mnemonics like west is best and east is least. There are also some not so simple mnemonics like can, I to try to remember one, can dead men vote twice at elections? CDM VTE, which stands for I'm trying to remember, so I don't get this wrong. Compass plus or minus deviation equals magnetic plus or minus variations equals true if you add the easterly. So CDM VTE. <laughs> it's, I, I have to remember them, these sort of things. I would suggest that you don't because they'll just hurt your head. So there are lots of different sayings or mnemonics which can help you remember how to deal with declination. And as the difference between your map points and where your compass points is changing all the time, and it's changing by different amounts and different speeds depending on where you live, these sayings, you know, which help you deal with declination, they are really useful. On my map reading courses, I tend to use WAVES, W-A-V-E-S as a mnemonic, as it's easy to remember and it'll work anywhere, which is really useful at the moment, um, mid-2023, as in the UK, just like in the USA, 
we have both east and westerly declinations, um, depending on which side of the country you are. Now, waves isn't a new way of adjusting for declination. It's just maybe new to you. It's, 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 a, it's a different way of helping people to remember how to do it. So waves, W-A-V-E-S, -W is just west add versus east subtract. That's all it means. West add versus east subtract. I first heard about the Waves mnemonic in the 1990s when it was being taught by a Swiss mountain guide. I was on a course there in Zermatt. So unless he came up with the idea, he must have heard it from someone else. So it's been around for quite a while. Um, but I've not been able to find many websites using it or any videos you know, of people explaining how to use a Waves mnemonic. So I thought I'd make this uh, quick video just to introduce it if you haven't heard about it before. If you already know this then go on to a different video. <laughs> but let's carry on with this. So even if you don't remember anything else about this video, remember this. Your map will wave at your compass and your compass will wave backwards at your map. Have you got that? Your map will wave at your compass and your compass will wave backwards at your map. So let's go through how we can use waves to take a bearing from a map to a ground feature. So I, I, I know where I am on my map and I want to walk somewhere else. And you know I plot the direction using my map and then transfer that to my compass. And also, how do we ident look at something we can see on the ground? How do we identify it on the map? Now, as I said, waves can be used anywhere, but in this video, we'll assume I'm in two different places. Um, one with a 10 degree west declination and the other one with a 10 degree east declination. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a bearing from my map and I'm going to transfer that onto my compass and I'm going to adjust it for the declination. So don't forget waves west add versus east subtract. Okay, so I'll drop this onto your screen so you can see what I'm doing. So here I am, so I'm by the side of this lake and I want to walk across the, uh, the ground to this track junction. So I take my compass bearing on the map and I can see that I've got a bearing of 264 degrees from the lake to the track junction. Now if I was in an area with a westerly direction, don't forget, west add, so I add 10 degrees. So my 264 degrees becomes 274. If I'm in an area with an easterly direction, don't forget, it is west add east subtract. So in this case, because I'm in an easterly declination area, I'm going to subtract 10 degrees. So my 264 becomes 254. Okay, so that's how you take it from a map, put it onto your compass and then set off. What happens if you want to take it from a ground feature and put, find that ground feature on your map? I'll, I'll drop this back onto your screen. So let's say that I'm, I've arrived at the track junction and I can look, looking across the countryside, I can see um, spot 2673, two, which is shown on the map. Now the, the bearing on my compass when I'm looking at it is 136 degrees. So I'm looking across the country using my compass and I get a bearing of 136 degrees. So basically you do everything in reverse of what you've just done. So you do exactly the opposite. I'll drop this back onto your screen. So in this case, the, the compass is showing me that point 0273 is at 136 degrees. I'm in an area with a westerly direction, so I subtract 10 degrees. Don't forget, if you remember before, we added it, but in this case, because I'm going from a magnetic to a grid bearing, I subtract. So my 136 degrees becomes 126. If I'm in an area with an easterly direction, I need to add 10 degrees. So my 136 becomes 146. And I then use my compass on the map and I can actually plot that bearing onto my map and I can you know, identify what I'm looking at. So that's how to use the Waves mnemonic to take a bearing from a map, adjust your compass and then set off, or to see something in the distance, take a compass bearing off it, adjust your compass and plot it on the map. Now, I suppose the question that has to be asked is, 
is it really necessary? Do you really need all these hundreds of mnemonics that we learn? Um, probably not, as sometimes they actually overcomplicate things. I mean, as an example, waves in this, you know, because we're talking about it, waves means west add or east subtract. Now, you only ever need half of that. You don't need both. You know, it's different if you're flying or you're sailing a long distance or whatever. But when you're out walking, you're only in an area with either a west declination when you need to add, or you're in an east declination when you need to subtract. So you don't need to know the other half. It's just overcomplicating things. Anyway, <laughs> starting to ramble there. So anyway, that's it. That's the Waves mnemonic, and uh, thanks for watching.